I should have done this sooner. Good evening, everyone. This is your host, Jess, and well, I made some mistakes. Mistakes that cannot be undone, and for that, I'm sorry. I missed the free version of the Overwatch 2 PvE, so I can't pass any judgment on it unless I've actually played it. Three hours later. And now I actually played it. And I did not enjoy it. I spent $15 on this. With so much hype, well, th there was. <laughs> With so much hype that the, there used to be surrounding Overwatch 2, Blizzard took it out the back to the barn and shot it with Buckshot, and that's what remained of Overwatch 2, a shell of its former self leaning against the back of a barn as blood slowly trickles out its cranial cavity. The skill tree from PvE and a majority of the campaign missions are missing. The skill tree would have been such an interesting addition, and now Donkey is severely disappointed. The campaign is getting released in parts and pieces that will each be $15, so that's going to total up to well over $60. Blech. If they even release any more of it. And then there are also the other heinous practices that went on at Blizzard. But enough of that. What went wrong with the PvE? Lots of things. Topics, go. So before getting into it, there are three different campaign missions. I don't dislike all the elements, but I'm gonna cover the ones that irritate me during my playthrough. Gameplay. It's vanilla Overwatch, but with four players. Um, so like those PvE missions in Overwatch 1, those were fun, weren't they? Spoiler, they were very boring and repetitive. Objectives. Overall, Rio de Janeiro doesn't really have any issues with objectives, but the boss fight is basically Bowser from Mario 64, so um... So long, baby. It's just kill robots and kill boss. Not, not that interesting. Canada. There is just something about defending a non-moving target that is just so boring. It's like being a turret, knowing you could move around the map, but you have to protect the thing, you know, the thing that would lose you the mission, you know, because that's how it was designed. Don't go too far, you gotta protect the thing the whole time, forever. And then you have to escort all the robot guys, keep them from getting damaged probably or some stuff, and... Sorry, I got bored. I'll say this, lacking dynamic objectives is not necessarily a bad thing because the player can still be enabled to have fun around stuff like this. Overwatch 2 just doesn't give players the tools to make doing these objectives interesting because it's just vanilla Overwatch. There's no real different way to play around it. It's just I sit and I wait for the next thing to happen. Honestly, at least I can change characters in multiplayer. So if the goal is to make me play multiplayer, it didn't work. Ikea. While that was a snoozer, I hope we don't have to... Are we capping a payload? We gotta sit and wait a payload for it to move slowly. And the two DPS are Torb and Bastion. That This is Payload Simulator. This is just giving me an excuse to play the multiplayer. Wait, no, it's saved. It's a giant robot. Wait, it's taking damage. We are going to fight... A giant robot. Let's go. Let's go right in. Stop that blade. Walls of nature. Come out. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm receiving a call. What do you mean we can't fight the giant robot? What do you mean it's a turret section? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Woo, the turret is doing the stuff. Woo, I'm having so much fun. Yeah, in a first person shooter. Yay. I wouldn't rather be fighting 4v1 against a giant robot at all. No. The most interesting thing that happened was the giant robot. And we didn't even get to fight the giant robot directly. Instead, we sat on a payload, then played 3D tower defense, which isn't as fun as that sounds. And we got to defend the big turret. Yeah to get a cutscene where the big turret destroys the robot because it stood in front of the turret. <laughs> yeah, come on, we don't even get to fight the robot. I'm, I'm sick of these objectives, they suck. Enemies, I'll be honest, the enemy design is fine. I like how you can destroy parts of the normal robots or tanks. I would appreciate if there were more interesting actions a robot would do if they got their parts broken. One thing about shooting robots is that they usually don't have a lot of reaction, like say, shooting a human, animal, bug, etc. But, but it's nice there's at least that part. 
I would like to see them having reactions to having part just destroyed, turn up 100%. Like, I want a robot to, like, chase me down as soon as I destroy its gun arm trying to melee me. If I destroy its legs, well, they do crawl, but maybe they should... It's just, some just make it just something else. Just, just make it do interesting stuff. Otherwise, it's fine. Uh, the special robots are kind of fun to fight. They require unique ways to take them down. If you get caught by one, you can escape with support from your team or using cooldown to disrupt them. And then there are these brain guys. I like them. Unfortunately, I have to defend bozos while fighting them. I love being able to shoot parts of them to take them down. But you notice I don't really have many gripes with the enemies, but I, I do hate their health pools. It's fun to dump an entire magazine into an enemy. Higher difficulties make the enemies do more damage and give them more health. It just doesn't feel fun with a damage sponge. It's like a boss in like Fallout 4. Some may enjoy a challenge, but I like a well-designed challenge. There's no method to the madness. This is just thrown together. If a swarm appears, then you're gonna be there a while. You lose if your support goes down and the revive times are egregious. I don't wanna replay this level again. Or to make the engagement with the robots more interesting themselves. Not just worrying about a special enemy, just the plain enemies. Only having my friends around would make me happy doing this but I don't want them to spend the money for this. Character options. You know, I get this is a, there is a story to this, but at least this can add a little replayability. I mean, once you compete a mission, at least, you could also have three Reinhardts and one Lucio. That sounds way more fun. Yeah. Bosses. The one from Rio de Janeiro is just ripped from Mario. So it's it's not that it's not that unique. Does it serve as a boss? Yeah, but that's that's about it. Especially with Blizzard's level of staffing. I imagine more effort went into boss design. Canada the Canada is the boss itself. The mission this mission was difficult because it was designed to be hell. The, can, just in get, uh, Canadians, you're in hell. It's one million degrees. Global warming. Pa, pa, Beating this is a boss, and I did not enjoy any second of this. Ikea. Not being able to fight a giant robot is so disappointing. I mean, the unique enemies were more fun to deal with than the bosses, so that's that's just quite a shame. Cost. For $15, you could be playing Stardew Valley instead. Map design. Why is there a long hallway with cannons that just kill you in Canada? Who thought that was going to be fun? This is just a kill zone. But I want to highlight the map design because it's so uninspired. It's either frustrating or boring. Enemy placement is annoying or meh. And then if they don't place them down, oh, they'll just teleport in. There's deployment pods, but, but not for this one, though. That's Ikea. They just appear. I thought I found a fun spot, so a better way to phrase this is enemy placement is thoughtless in how players would interact with that. In Rio, um, we went to a ship. That was a nice change of scenery. Then the ship blew up, uh, so it's, it's fine. Nothing, nothing, nothing interesting really happened. It's, it was open, like a Walmart during Black Friday. Nah, I'm just kidding. That 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 shit's packed. Yeah, IKEA is a straight line with a payload. There's no unique spots really for enemies to hide. They just roll into your weapons. There's no hidden anything. It's just all in front of you, like a conveyor belt. Consume, consume, consume. Enemies are just fed you without any rhyme or reason than to just slow you down. I don't feel accomplished sitting on a payload and then just aiming my mouse. This is just multiplayer without the nuance of competing with other players for victory. At least without a payload, I could get through this faster and do something else, but uh, no. You know, for a third person shooter, micromanaging turrets is exactly what I want to do. How did Blizzard know? They actually could have had a way more interesting turret section if they just put in the time instead of, hey there, buddy, turret. This one pushes and this one freezes. Oh, oh, oh. Missed opportunities. I hate how this just plays out like an Overwatch 1 PvE mission. There's just not enough substance to play this, and the elements at play don't mix well together at all. It was designed to have a more dynamic approach from the player side into the environment. Now all the flaws in the environment become much more apparent because there's not much there. It's an underbaked PvE mode that doesn't understand why PvE is fun in the first place, 
Bloodborne is difficult, but it understands why that difficulty makes it fun. Halo lets you tackle fights in so many unique ways. And Left 4 Dead doesn't just make the zombies boring to shoot. All these minor elements that we don't usually think about are what make the major elements pop out in the game. But Overwatch 2 doesn't have the major elements established. It's boring to shoot the robots, the objectives are boring and drawn out, the bosses are lame, the difficulty isn't balanced out or fun. This mode is either frustrating or boring at best, which goes to show how pivotal the skill tree could have been. It could have been unique, even if nothing else was interesting, becoming a maze snowball and running over people is fun. Blizzard thought it was okay to just release this and call it done, and suffice to say, I'm really just done with Blizzard Activision, or Blizzard Activision Microsoft, or will what it will be, or whenever that happens. I don't know if that's still going on. The amount of unique ways challenges could have been approached in Overwatch's PE could have been fun, not mind-blowing, but fun. But instead, it's just a watered-down Overwatch 1 mission, but there's three of them! Now, to leave this on a more positive note, pros. You know, the voice actors did pretty well. The cutscenes are well animated. The maps look nice. I I'm, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. That's it. That's what I enjoyed. It sucked. It's bad. Boring. And it's not like I want Overwatch to die, but Blizzard needs to stop digging a grave with an excavator. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about the story. Um, so, uh, Ramatra is like, Mah! um, then in the, uh, then, uh, Ramatra wanted to give all the robot guys funny hats. Oh yeah, Reinhardt is racist. And then in the, 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 the Canadian lady was like, um, I like to be a freelancer. And then, um, uh, uh, and then Reinhardt was no longer racist. And then Zenyatta and Ramatra kissed on the mouth. <laughs>